This video is a re-edit of two of my videos that showed how to rebush clock plates by hand without the expensive professional tools. I have included it as bonus content for the recent Clock Repair for Total Beginners video series. It was requested by one of my subscribers. Also, as part of the request, I will be adding a list of the tools you will need to carry out these operations and also links to purchase them online. The procedure for bushing plates, front back plates in the clock movement by hand is very much similar to the other method other than you're saving yourself $2,000 on a bushing machine. First we have to start off by looking at the individual bushes and pivots to see what they are like, see how loose they are. We're going to look at the, the first wheel on the going side train of this session's clock. We're looking at that pivot there. And we can see it moving substantially left and right. All right, first thing we'll do, take the movement apart. Take the nuts off those pillars. There are different ways you can do this operation that I'm going to show you now. I'll be using a large pin vise, but you can also use um, an electric drill or a drill press or a cordless drill for that matter. The drill press is probably a better way to go because it will at least keep the drill bit while you bit while you were drilling will keep it in the right plane. It won't move round left and right, which is a possibility if you're using an electric drill. Right, let's measure the... We'll measure the pivot first to get the diameter of it. 1.78 mil. that down one point seven eight mil we'll see what size bush that requires do that we go to our box of bushes and read along here one point seven eight Fifty one, one point seven zero, fifty two is one point eight zero. So we'll we'll get a number fifty one out and try that. Okay, number fifty one. The pushing there. I'll actually put it on top of the box for a moment and then we'll try to insert the pivot into it and it catches just on the end but won't go into it so that's the size we're looking for Rub a band back on the case so we don't drop all the bushes then we have a look and see what data we've got here for number 51. I'll jot that down. Number 51 bushing. Maximum hole diameter. 
is 3.50 mil. Write that down. Right, that's the data we need so that we can work out what ream is to use to cut the hole. Put that aside. Now I'll mark with a pen so we know what which one we're doing. We're going to rebush that hole there. Well, we're going to put a bush in. Never had a bush in. It's just been drilled out, punched out in the factory. That's the one that we're looking at there. That little black mark on there, felt tip pen, helps us remember which hole we're working on. All right, over our tool kit, 3.5 mil, 3.47 is the last one we'll use, so we'll go down two sizes. That should be 2.47, yes it is. Now we'll get our pin vise, may not look like a pin vise, but it is. A seriously big one because the small ones don't have a mouth opening wide enough to be able to do this. Right now, Put our reamer into the hole and same as when we're broaching out the bush later on, we have to keep our reamer perpendicular to the plate at all times in all directions. Now we line it up, get it square and then start reaming slowly. It's a long, slow process. You can't push it too fast. Keep sufficient pressure on it to see a little bit of swarf being cut out. Cut it back in again. Spin it round slowly. It is actually cutting in. It doesn't seem to be making much movement, but it is. Much progress. Keep turning it. We've reached the end of the first reamer. We'll remove that. We'll put in the 2.97 mil. Tighten it down, insert the reamer into the hole again, and once again start spinning the pin vise. Little bit of forward pressure, a case of making haste slowly. Move the swarf from there, the rimmer back in again, keeping it perpendicular to the plate. Continue to turn the pin vise in your hand. Rather time-consuming work, but 
this is the way you do it if you haven't got a bushing machine. I'll do a little bit of this offline because it's taking a fair bit of time. Then I'll be back. Down on the 3.47 mil rima now, we're getting close. Keep turning it round slowly. You can feel it cutting into the material. There we go. It's gone through. Right. Feeling that now. On both sides, we've got a burr. So we'll run the chamfer, little chamfer tool over it and remove that burr. That's something that doesn't come up when we're using the bushing tool. Change the rim up. That's got him. Once again, align it. 90 degrees, spin it half a dozen turns is about all it takes on the on bottom, same on the top. You don't want to cut material out, you're just removing the burr. Yes, that feels Nice and smooth now. Okay. It's all our swath that we've cut out of the out of the movement. Right, I've got our plate fixed to the top of a vice and that just holds us securely there. You'll notice we're going to drive the, the bushing in from the outside of the plate. It's normally done from the inside of the plate. But because We want the bushing to be flat inside the plate. We'll have to push it in this side and then we'll check it once we've done that and if it's a little bit proud on the other side, we'll bring it down with a file. Couple of little taps first. Get it seated squarely. Then we can hammer it home. Do the clamp. Here's the new bushing. You'll notice it's pretty proud on the outside. So because I've got rubber here, I'll try to tap that down with the hammer, which may save us having to file the inside there. Yep. Lovely, that's brought it out nicely. There's our new bushing. Now we're going to start broaching. Now we'll test the pivot in our new bush that we've just put in. It doesn't fit, which we knew. Now I've selected this brooch, put it into a pin vise, much smaller than the one we had before. Tighten that up. Insert the brooch into the bush. 
once again set up the the brooch to be perpendicular perpendicular to the plate then slowly start to turn it you only need three or four turns take it out check the pivot doesn't fit yet do some more Make sure it's aligned properly. Being a front plate, we haven't got any pillars to align it with. So we have to rely on our eyesight. There we go. It's just fitted in. It's very tight, but we won't take any more off with the brooch. until we fit it in between the plates we're pretty much guaranteed to have to do some more broaching but we want to find out how much we've got to do Yep, seriously tight, so we'll do a little bit more to make it easier to put the plates together so we can check it. That went through quickly and didn't take very much off it. So I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference, but we'll try it. Top plate back on again. A little bit of pressure in the center to hold it. Get the pillars lined up. Here we go. Still too tight, we'll take some more off. Which means you'll have to go up to a larger size brooch. And I think that's a larger size in the small ones. Get out our medium brooches. fits. That looks like it's about the smallest one in there I think. Yep, that's the one we want at the moment. Put the brooch into the pin vise. Tighten it down. Now we have to go very slowly here. We want to take out not very much material at all. That'll do us for the first try. Top plate back on again. Line the posts, put the pivot back into the bush.
almost there, not quite, another two or three turns, we should be right. The pivot fits, but the wheel's not spinning freely, and I think end play will be a bit slack too, as in there won't be any of it, or not enough of it. Line the brooch again, perpendicular, couple of turns, wind it out, blow the swarf out of it, top plate back on again, fits in. There we have it. Actually that should spin a fraction longer. I'll take one more go on the brooch. And then that should solve the problem totally. Line the brooch again. Couple of little turns, take it out. Top plate back on. Pivot into the bush. Pillars aligned. That one. There we go. And that's how it's done.